guys welcome back again to clinical Q&A series so this is a continuation of our previous video that is clinical Q&A episode 2 uh, so for those who haven't watched the episode 2 I highly recommend doing it right now so here is the I button where you can jump into that video so now let's talk about clinical queue number 60. So as I already told you that this is a continuation of clinical queue number 15. And we had been talking about cocaine and CRCP. CRCP means cocaine related chest pain. So I'll jump straight to the question they have asked. So we gave the patient lorazepam, morphine and nit nitroglycerin infusion. Uh, after that, two hours in the casualty, the patient had weakness in his right hand. His chest pain is somewhat better, but he still has pain at the middle and upper part of the sternum. So note that he still has chest pain. So the blood pressure was came down to 133 bar 80. The heart rate is 88 per minute and is regular. So the neurological examination shows mild muscle weakness affecting the right upper and lower ex extremities. So he has some kind of focal neurological symptoms too. The speech is normal. Uh, repeat ECG shows normal sinus rhythm with no significant abnormalities. The lab results are leukocytes 11,000, normal hemoglobin 12.2, that's normal. Platelets 2,20,000, that's normal. Sodium 134, normal. Potassium 4.1, that is normal. Creatinine 0.8, that is also normal. And troponin is undetectable so that means uh, this patient has no mi no signs of mi acs or anything an immediate or known contrast ct scan of the head reveals no evidence of bleeding so that's also ruled out ruled out which of the following is the best next step in management of this patient so what do you think actually the patient uh, or the examiner is asking you like what do, what should you suspect so it says that the patient still has mild chest pain but his bp is okay normal and he has some focal neurological sign so as i had already explained to you in the last video that the CRCP, the CRCP could be both cardiac or non-cardiac and in cardiac it could be either due to MI, ACS or it could be due to acute, uh, sorry, it could be due to acute aortic dissection. Then the non-cardiac causes which is pulmonary causes, it could be crack lungs, okay. So he, over here you have to have the next thing that should come to your mind is aortic dissection acute aortic dissection why because acute aortic dissection is an emergency so you guys would ask me like see we had already checked the bp on both right and left uh, limbs and the deficit wasn't more than or the difference was in more than 20 millimeter of Hg. So then why should we think about aortic dissection? See, aortic dissection should be thought because it's an emergency. If it it, it needn't be that the iot the patient should have a deficit all the time because we had already lowered the BP. Hmm? So you have to rule out aortic dissection properly. So let's go to the uh, the funda. So the patient had cocaine uh, and he, he had hypertension. Think about aortic dissection over here. Why? Because it's most common cause of acute aortic dissection in young patients is cocaine ingestion. Okay. Now let's let's 
briefly summarize the cocaine ingestion so when a person has co uh, ingested cocaine he will have these symptoms that is there will be persistent chest pain he'll have some neurological symptoms like headache nausea and the signs will be severe hypertension tachycardia shortness of breath tachypnea if it's severe uh, hypertension and tachycardia it will be much more of cardiac type of chest pain and if it's shortness of breath and tachypnea think about pulmonary uh, really uh, chest pain uh, and you should think about cracked lungs now the clinical manifestations will be myocardial ischemia it could be acute aortic dissection it could be neurological ischemia which leads to stroke now the treatment of this whole funda should be the first step you have to lower the bp you have to lower the bp and with uh, with what you have to lower you have to use benzodiazepines and nitroglycerins because benzodiazepines decrease the sympathetic outflow okay and calms the patient down now the second step is that you have to check for any acs symptom that is acute coronary symptoms if yes then give them a low molecular weight heparin like uh, you have to give anticoagulants okay the second if the bp is not lowered by benzodiazepine then the second line of bp lowering agent is fentolamine as already explained an alpha blocker okay now if the bp lowered after giving benzodiazepine but the chest pain and neurological sign persist as of this question you have to think about aortic dissection because it's an emergency condition uh, and so, 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 the thing is that aortic dissection normally have the symptoms like severe severe chest pain uh, then they, they will be having high BP and the BP will be disproportionate reading that is uh, if you check the BP of right and uh, left limbs or the upper and lower limbs you will have a difference of more than 20 millimeter Hg but even then you have to rule out aortic dissection if, even if it is less than 20 millimeter of Hg you have to rule out aortic dissection with CT and geography so CT and geography now let's look at the treatment so the treatment for iota dissection will be emergency dacron graft repair so why did we suspect aortic dissection because the most common cause of aortic dissection in young patients is cocaine ingestion cocaine ingestion so the, have that thought in mind now let's look into the options see the options given was a was carotid artery ultrasound see carotid artery ultrasound is usually done to evaluate the atherosclerotic atherosclerotic carotid artery stenosis okay but it's very highly it's highly unlikely it's high, high, highly unlikely that this patient will be having any atherosclerotic disease because he's young okay now ct angiography of the chest that is the answer uh, and now let's talk about C intravenous alteplase. So this is a fibronolytic agent, and it if it is indicated less than 4.5 hours of the symptoms, less than 4.5 hours. If it is a thrombotic ischemic cell stroke, okay, thrombotic ischemic stroke, but uh, over here the patient even after giving benzodiazepine and nitroglycerin the patient's a bp the patient's bp has lowered but the chest pain persists and there is neurological system so it is highly unlikely uh, highly unlikely it would be thrombotic uh, stroke and so and it would be it, it is it is uh, there's a high chance of acute aortic dissection 
and another thing fibronolytic agents or thrombolysis or anticoagulants are all contraindicated in acute aortic uh, acute aortic dissection the next thing is intravenous phentermine it's given here for as a second line management of pp control in the patients but here already the bp is controlled so that's not that and lmwh lmwh should be given uh, only for acute coronary symptoms if the patient is having acute coronary symptoms and again anticoagulants are contraindicated in case of acute aortic dissection they are contraindicated okay okay guys uh, you have to keep practicing clinical cues clinical cues it doesn't matter like uh, if you haven't studied the topic but keep practicing clinical cues because that will help you score better in the next pattern next pattern and also the new pattern in pg exams okay and whenever you study a topic whenever you study a topic you have to think like an examiner you have to think like an examiner that is like how are you going to set a, if you talk, you have studied a topic and now you go now you have to set the question you have to set the question in a clinical manner set a clinical question that is the best method that you can learn to learn a particular concept okay learn a particular concept the next thing that you have to, or a, a, you learn a clinical cue the next thing that you have to do is you have to make a clinical formula make a clinical formula make a clinical formula okay what is this clinical formula what do what do i mean by clinical formula now from here onwards what you guys have to do is that you learn a clinical cue like what all we are posting over here you have to make a clinical formula and you have to note it down in a separate book note it down in a separate book so this book will be your last minute revision book last minute revision book you will have all these clinical formulas okay what i mean by clinical formula that i'm going to explain right now so for example let's take the example of this particular clinical cue itself okay so over here we were talking about cocaine this is the clinical clinical formula clinical formula okay this has to be written in your last the let's say the 20th book that you are going to make clinical formula okay we were talking about this particular clinical question is itself about cocaine we learned something called as crcp it is cocaine related chest pain we learned that it leads to hypertension because of the increased sympathetic out outflow and we again learned that the treatment is benzodiazepine benzodiazepine okay we again learned a secondary thing so what you have to do is that you just write it draw an arrow like this that is it it, it means that it's a, again about crcp itself the concept about crcp something to deal with that you gave benzodiazepine but still you are being asked another question what is a next management kind of question that is a, this question this number 16 question you write you write about the concept we learned today that is acute aortic dissection acute aortic dissection so how to diagnose it by ct angiography ct angiography okay and what is the treatment it's dacron graft repair dacron graft repair okay 
so this is the clinical formula for this particular clinical question similarly you have to note down so this is just a single line okay you have you have to note down these kind of clinical formulas in your 20th book now another thing is mind maps mind maps okay mind maps mind maps is also a very good tool to learn easily learn things so mind maps i will be making a separate video of the same clinical vq in my next video we will be discussing about mind maps on the clinical q number 15 and number 16 and how to make a mind map mind map all i will be discussing in the uh, next video that we will be uh, putting up so guys all these notes will be posted in our instagram channel at notespedia notes p a e d i a notespedia this one and so please do uh, follow our instagram channel facebook and also the telegram handle uh, and also guys please do subscribe our channel hit the bell icon to get all the notification if you enjoyed this video please hit the like if you got any doubts or corrections please let me know in the comment section we'll try to answer all of them thank you guys